we are going to check the tire pressure and fill it if it needs to be filled. And this is our tire pressure checker. Um, it's uh, listed in two measurements, KPA, uh, that's the metric version, and pounds per square inch, which of course is the imperial version. Typically, uh, you're going to use pounds per square inch, or PSI. Um, when we looked on the specs for our rig, it says that these should be inflated to 85 PSI. Your tires don't necessarily match um, what your manufacturer recommendation is. Uh, case in point, these tires have a max load of, um, if it's a dual tire, of 3,750 pounds at 110 PSI. So basically, this one has a max inflation pressure of 110 PSI. The manufacturer who designed the rig and uh, uh, the weight specifications of the rig said 85 PSI. So in an insurance situation, listen to the manufacturer. So to check it, you'll want to take the open end and push it against your uh, valve stem. So push it against the valve stem and that's going to pop out. Um, now my front tire sometimes will pop this way out and it says it's 100 PSI and I know there's not 100 PSI in there. Uh, but right now it says that I'm about, about 82-ish. Okay. Um, because if I pull this out, I'm right under 84, and it's supposed to be 85. Um, so it's kind of on a, do I want to inflate it more or not? You put your thumb on the back right here. Uh, yeah, I just did that for pressure. Oh. So I could push it. Um, do you have to put your thumb back there? No. You can do it any way you want, if you can get the pressure. Um. So how many times do you do that? Uh, I usually check it a couple of times to make sure that it wasn't off. And when I did it slow like that, it brought it right a little bit farther down. So I'm going to say this probably has about 82 in it and needs a few pounds. So then I will fill the tire. You may or may not need a primer on air compressors, uh, but they come in various different sizes, basically. Uh, they have the roadside assistance ones. A lot of times those will go up to like 80 PSI. They all work the same way. They pump air in uh, from the outside, and they pump it into a storage container that stores air, um, in compressed air. And uh, then, of course, you can use that air however you please to fill up tires or blow off your driveway or whatever. Um, the uh, Some of them have dials and some of them don't. Uh, for example, this is 110 PSI max, so it'll get filled up to 110 PSI. And this little dial actually will determine my filling pressure. If I turn that, um, this dial uh, s tells me how much pressure is out it's outputting. So if my tires are only inflated to 30 psi, I can set it to you know 30 or 40 psi, and that's all it will put out of this. Hello. Okay, so now it's my turn to inflate our tires. And there are three steps that you need to follow, just as Levi explained a bit more thoroughly before. Step one, check your manufacturer's recommended tire pressure, which can be found in your rig on a sticker. And it will be under the section that typically says cold inflation, and then it will list the front and your back tires. So we've already done that, and we know that our recommended PSI for these tires is 85. So now I'm going to move on to step two and I'm going to check the pressure of my tires. I'm right here where my dual, my dualies are, as Levi said, which are your dual tires. And I have my stems located right in here inside of the rim, the tire rim. No, no, it's a hubcap. No, it hubcap. <laughs> and then the other stem is much longer and Actually, the one that's in here is the front tire, right? That's the front tire. Okay, and then the longer stem is the back tire. Yep. Okay, all right. So, I'm going to get my pressure gauge and I'm going to check the correction front tire, which is right here. And I'm going to push the gauge into the stem to see what the tire pressure is. Okay, right now it shows 80, but Levi did say to check it a couple of times just to make sure I'm getting the same rating. 
Okay, that was no good. I got 70. No. What am I not doing right? You just didn't hold it on straight. Oh. There we go. Okay, I got 80 again. Let me do it again? No, you're good. All right. So I know it's 80. I need to get it up to 85. All right, so I'm going to get my air compressor, which is right here. And I need to put this on top, right? Yeah. Okay. Which is not going to be fun. Oh, all right. Thanks for the warning. Hi. Uh, okay, yeah. so there is an attachment that comes to this to help you get inside of these hard to reach places. Um, it we looks don't... like the gauge. Oh, and it, it looks just like this gauge. However, we don't have it, so I'm going to finagle my way around here into the back. And you can see the stem in the back over here. I'm going to go ahead and press down on it, and I need to turn on the... Yeah, I need to turn on the air. It's on? Yeah. not. If air is blowing all over the place, it's not going in. How do I secure it? Push it harder. Oh. And out. Let me see what the pressure is. No, keep it on. You have to wait until that builds up. at least 85, but 100 because you want enough. Okay, go ahead. Too often I rely on my husband to troubleshoot problems with the RV. This appears to be the norm among traveling partners we meet. And although it is quite fortunate to have someone on board that knows the RV functions, it is even more important for the other to be in the know, especially in emergency instances where one man is down. In our new series, Natalie Learns How, we hope to empower travelers who heavily rely on their partners to operate an RV and problem-solve issues.